Welcome. I'm Alice Alicia Jones, and this is another one of my Living Consciously videos. Last week, when I looked at the chat, one of the participants uh, said, if you would talk about Reiki, that would be awesome. I loved that comment, and I decided, okay, I will give you a brief rundown of Reiki because I've taught it for over 20 years and I am very fond of the modality. There are thousands of healing modalities out there. There's some that have risen to the top. I feel Reiki probably unleashed the torrent because it has been on this planet since the early 1900s. In 19, um, I think it was, what, 1923, that uh, Dr. Usui started his clinic. And how the clinic came to be was because he was born in, into a very well-to-do family and in 1865 and then just had a normal business-like life and felt that he was a, um, uh, successful. He was successful. And then all of a sudden, something happened that his business failed and he decided to become a Buddhist monk. And in that process, one of the things that he did was he went to Mount Kurama in Japan and stood under a waterfall that beat very heavily into his crown. And as he beat as the energy beat into his crown, he recognized that he was receiving a new type of energy that he could use to pass on to the people that would listen to him. Up to that point, he practiced a form of energy uh, healing called Kiko, and which is very similar to Qigong in, in what we know today as Qigong. And Kiko was the, the whole difference between Kiko was that in order to pass on the healing energy to another person, you first had to store it up in your own body. And so you worked at storing it up and storing it up and storing it up, and then you passed it on to the other person. Reiki is totally different. Reiki, the word Rei stands for universal. Key is energy. Universal energy, universal life flow, another name for God. God's energy. It's unlimited. It's free. What he discovered is that this energy continued to just pour through him and out of him. No storing up necessary, no depletion possible. So it's, and this is the way we work with it now. I love the Reiki energy simply because of how it has, how deeply it has affected me in my life and how many times I have happened to be able to bring healing to other people strictly because of the fact that it's an unlimited supply. It never stops flowing. You set your intent to to have it. You do have to go through an attunement process. It's passed on from person to person through an attunement. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the facets of Reiki, but one of the, the things that I wanted to cover today was the fact that 
it has an uncanny ability to heal just about everything. And I'll give you an example from my personal uh, life, which happened to me last year. I was in New York, took my grandson to school, and on the way home, fell and tripped and just skidded, put my hands out and immediately, you know, went into, you know, some kind of a a daze. And so as I sat there, and fortunately there were four women that were helping me uh, just get to a park bench. As, As I sat there, I held my elbow. I just kind of held it and because the pain seemed to radiate from the elbow and finally when I stabilized in about half an hour or so I walked the block and a half to their uh, home and when I sat down I gave myself Reiki for an hour one hour and then the rest of the day I just had a normal day. At the end of the day, um, we had dinner, uh, talked. They were, my my daughter-in-law and son were really concerned. They thought they should take me to emergency. I, I felt that I didn't feel anything. So why should I go to emergency? And uh, the next day, we went to a walk to Prospect Park to the zoo. So that was a pretty long walk. That was about a three to four hour endeavor, Um, maybe five hours by the time we got home. Um, We walked to the park, but we took the bus home. So uh, that helped a little bit. That was a Tuesday. On Wednesday, I drove home from, because I had driven myself to New York, I drove home. On Thursday, I just had a normal day. On Friday, I noticed that I went to open a jar of peanut butter and my left hand uh, really didn't function that well. It wasn't, I didn't have the strength to twist the, the top open. And so, but I didn't think much of it. On Saturday, I'm I'm weeding the uh, my daffodil bed and I noticed that, oh, I can I can dig weeds perfectly with my right hand, couldn't do it with my left. So then I didn't even then go to emergency. I went to emergency on Monday. And as I went to emergency, uh, the doctor tested it and, and said, I'm going to send you down for an x-ray. And I kept thinking, well, that's going to be a total waste of time. And after they x-rayed me, they said, you have broken the radius of the tibia, which is one of the longest bones in our body. The radius is right at the top, and I cracked right through it. The fact that I didn't have any pain that entire time showed me that Had I suspected that I actually had a broken bone and continued to give myself Reiki every day, I could have probably healed that bone. Because the only thing they did for me, they put my arm in a sling and they just said, keep it, keep it as, as quiet as possible. Keep it immobile for the next two weeks. And then after two weeks, I went, had another x-ray and it was healed. But this showed me personally the power of Reiki. I know last week I had been talking about energy distortions. And I know that when we have given Reiki sessions to other people, occasionally, Rarely, but occasionally, there have been people that have come to us, one in particular, who absolutely 
did not know how to manage her own energy. She would take from other people. And those in those years, we had this um, practice of giving Reiki to people for as many hours as clients showed up. In other words, if three clients showed up, we'd give offer three hours of Reiki, if four, four hours, five, five hours. And I know I was at the beginning of the session. I was leading the, um, the, the group. And all of a sudden, I'm going from per- being feeling completely healthy, completely normal, completely okay to feeling as if first I feel nauseous, then I feel weak, then I feel like, oh my God, I'm going to throw up. And all I kept thinking is, I better get out of here. I look behind me and there on the floor, a woman had walked in had laid down and had put a psychic hook into me and was draining my energy. She didn't know how to manage her own energy, so she took it from other people by just doing that, putting a psychic hook in. I know over the years, people have come to me for counseling And the word toxic, toxic people, has shown up time and time and time again. But I also know that there are times and situations and people and places that you have to survive within that group of toxic people. So what the thing that you have to learn how to do is to protect yourself from that. And I know that when I'm working with Reiki energy, sometimes a person feels like they can unload, but in the process of unloading, if I'm not protected, I might absorb some of the toxicity. So I've learned to really honor the words, put up your shields. If I hear that, those words from my guides, put up your shields, I recognize, um, I visualize something similar to what the Roman legions had. A shield in front, in back, top, bottom, side, side. And It's an impenetrable shield. I can visualize it made of steel, of lead, but typically white light. And that light brings me the comfort and the protection that I need. I've also recommended to people that if they're in a situation where People come at them continuously and with barbs or with uh, anything that uh, makes them uncomfortable to wrap themselves in white light, but to also put a mirror facing out because that white light, the mirror will give them the, the possibility probability of the negativity coming towards them, seeing itself and deflecting away. Simple technique, not, you know, not, nothing that complicated, but it does work. So I do have those, those are my two favorite. I also use this as a form of protection. One is a cross, 
It's a cross not made of, of, it has a dove in the center. I don't think you, it's, it's, it's hard to see. It has a dove in the center and it's all floral design. So it has nothing to do with crucifixion. It has everything to do with being a solar cross and Moldavite and the little dove, which is a symbol of my ministry. So I feel if when I wear that, and that ne this never comes off. It just, you know, never gets in my way. It's always uh, on my person. And I feel that I am completely protected with that. I also love the bracelets. Moonstone, amethyst, hematite. Recently, um, the bracelet of hematite was introduced to me because I had a slight uh, session of vertigo. And uh, so fortunately, the gal that I was talking to knew that when her husband experienced the same thing, uh, she had researched which uh, stone was the best for vertigo. And she found out that it was hematite. So needless to say, I will, you know, wear that too. But getting back to Reiki, Reiki is an energy that has evolved over the years. When Dr. Usui set up his practice, he took it upon himself to have various hand positions so that every single um, disease had its own set of hand positions and his students couldn't graduate to learn another pattern until they perfected uh, the pattern they were working on. And so they learned pattern after pattern after pattern. We recognize that Reiki has an, an intelligence of its own. It does not need to be directed. It does not need to be guided. It will go. You can send it in one place. It will go where it is needed. And it, the, the beauty is that when you send it long distance, one of the things in healing, and especially in energy healing, I think all kinds of healing, you do have to get the permission of the person that you're working on. And with us in energy healing, we work through the higher self, sometimes getting the permission verbally or long distance or through, you know, however, um, is not possible. And so we ask the higher self if to then take that energy healing and give it, take it to the place where it needs to go, give it to the people it needs to be given to. So please do not think that any distance healing that you send is wasted because the higher self of the being that you're working with is always going to recognize what to do with that energy, where to go with it. And that is always in divine order. That will never be um, taken away. And you do not have to be involved in how to direct it other than your intention to send it. That's it. So that's, that's the beauty of it. Um, I love Reiki above all the other modalities. I know other people. People, they find their niche. They kind of gravitate to something that really talks to them. And that's fantastic. And that's why there are so many different healing modalities. 
because of that, because there are so many different uh, choices, because there's so many different people in the world. And there's, I, I've tried to experience all of it. I try to, uh, if I hear a new modality, I try to have a sample of it given to me. And I'm going to be receiving something new on Monday called divine healing that I had never heard of. And so very, very pleased to be able to, to get that. But be open and receptive to whatever comes your way. And just know that it is your intention that puts the Reiki healing in motion once you are attuned to Reiki. I am teaching Reiki 1 tomorrow, but uh, the class, I think, at this point, uh, I wouldn't be accepting any more students. I just, uh, and the class repeats in May, and then it repeats again in September. And then Reiki 2 in February, in June, and in October, and Reiki 3 in, uh, what is it, March, and um, July, and November. So, and I don't, let's see, do I have a copy of my book here? I guess I do. Um, no, I do not. Um, and again, if uh, you need further information on what I offer, go to my website, Alicia, A-L-I-C-J-A, jones.com. My book is on special for $20. Shipping and handling is included. And it's, that's a hardcover copy. It's a beautifully designed copy. It has a dust jacket as well as gold lettering on the hard hardcover. I absolutely love it. Plus, it's a meditation for it's you read just two pages a day. So uh, it's it's not hard to get through and everything. But I, I thank you for being here. Thank you for your attention. And I absolutely am. Uh, happy to um, receive any suggestions for further talks because, like I said, I've I've done talks on at least 150 subjects. So, um, and I'm trying to bring forth the ones that that people are express interest in. And I will see you next week at uh, one o'clock. Thank you. Bye bye now. <laughs>